Welcome back once again all of my low carb friends and for those of you who are here for the first time a big welcome to you. Today's recipe comes by request of my husband. My husband's diabetic and one of his favorite holiday drinks is eggnog. But as I'm sure you all know the eggnog that you buy on the store has tons of sugar and corn syrup and all kinds of things that you cannot have if you are a diabetic or on a keto diet. And so my husband asked if I could find a way to make low carb eggnog. And I said, of course, honey, I can do that. <laughs> and so today I am going to teach you how to make a very quick, very easy, very tasty keto eggnog. And I'm also going to throw in a bonus recipe that is perfect for your holiday desserts that are right around the corner here. I am going to show you how to make a quick, easy keto pumpkin caramel chocolate chip cookie squares. So easy and so good. And if you want printable versions of these, you can check out my website at JanetsDeliciousLowCarbKitchen.com. You can find printable versions of these and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious, low carb keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out a new video. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You can find some Amazon affiliate links anytime you purchase anything using my Amazon affiliate link. A small portion will go to me, which will help to support the channel. So when that holiday shopping comes around, which is really close around the corner, make sure you remember your favorite YouTuber, me, and use my affiliate link and anything that you purchase on Amazon, a small portion will go to me, which will help to support the channel. And while you do all that, let's get cooking. In a medium saucepan with the heat off, combine one fourth cup of granulated swerve or granulated sweetener of your choice and one fourth teaspoon of salt. Whisk these together until they're fully combined. Add three large eggs and two cups of the milk of your choice. Whisk these all together until they're fully combined and smooth. Make sure the egg yolks are thoroughly whisked in with all the ingredients. Turn on the heat to medium and gently whisk the mixture continuously over medium heat for about seven to eight minutes or until the mixture reaches about 160 degrees. Now, if you don't have a thermometer, it's okay. You just want to look for the mixture to just start steaming a little bit. Basically, all you're wanting to do is to cook the eggs enough to where no bacteria can form. So you're not wanting to make sweetened scrambled eggs. You're wanting just to cook it enough just so that the bacteria stays away. So the two things you want to make sure you're doing here is whisking it continuously. Otherwise, it will turn into scrambled eggs and just watching for it to start steaming a bit. Once the mixture is steaming a little bit, remove it from the heat, add one teaspoon of vanilla extract, one eighth teaspoon of ground cinnamon, one eighth teaspoon of ground ginger, and one eighth teaspoon of nutmeg or allspice, whichever one you want. Whisk these all together until they're fully combined and the seasonings are evenly distributed throughout the mixture. Now you can adjust these spices or change them according to your personal taste. So if you want more or less of the spices, you can put more or less, or if you want a different type of spice, you can change it. However you prefer it to taste is up to you there. Once everything's all combined, I like to pour this through a sieve first before I put it in my mason jar or whatever pitcher I'm putting it in. I like to pour it through a sieve first just to make sure that if there are any big chunks of the spices left that they get strained out of the eggnog. It's up to you whether you want to do that or not. You don't have to. That's just what I like to do. So I pour it through a sieve first just to make sure everything is smooth 
and then after I pour it through the sieve then I pour it into my mason jar or whatever container I'm planning to store the eggnog in. Once it is poured into your mason jar or whatever container you're planning to store the eggnog in, place it into the refrigerator without the lid on it for about 20 minutes or just to make sure that the eggnog is not hot. After 20 minutes, put the lid on your mason jar or whatever container that you're using to store the eggnog in, place it back in the refrigerator, and chill it for at least one hour before serving it. It tastes best if it is chilled for at least an hour. That way the flavors get to really sit in and make it taste a whole lot better. Once you're ready to use it, pour it into the glass of your choice and you can store the leftovers in your refrigerator for up to three days. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees Line an 8 by 8 inch cake pan with parchment paper. Allow the parchment paper to hang over the sides a bit. This will act as handles and make it easier to lift out the cookie slab once it's all cooked. In a large mixer bowl, combine 3 fourths cup of coconut flour, a half cup of granulated swerve or granulated sweetener of your choice, a half cup of brown swerve or brown sugar sweetener of your choice, two teaspoons of baking powder, one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon, and a half teaspoon of nutmeg or allspice, and a half teaspoon of salt. Whisk these together until they're fully combined and there are no lumps in the coconut flour. You also can sift these in if you'd rather sift them in. Either way, you just want to make sure that everything is fully combined and there are no large lumps. Add two large room temperature eggs. Make sure they are room temperature. It makes it for a smoother batter. Beat on low for about 10 seconds or just until the dry ingredients are moistened. Then increase the speed to medium low and beat on medium low for about 20 to 30 seconds or until everything is fully combined and the mixture is crumbly. Scrape down the sides of the bowl if you need to. Add 1 fourth cup of room temperature butter that's been softened. Make sure it's just softened, not fully melted. Add a half cup of pumpkin puree and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Beat these on medium for another 30 seconds or until everything is fully combined and your dough is smooth. Now remember if you're buying pumpkin puree in the store, make sure you read the ingredients and make sure that it is just pumpkin with nothing else added to it. You don't want a pumpkin pie mix or anything like that, you just want pure pumpkin. Once your dough is smooth, Gradually fold in about a half cup of keto chocolate chips. I use the Lily's brand and I'll leave a link in the description as to where you can buy those. Just add a little bit of chocolate chips, then fold them in and a little bit more, fold them in until the entire half cup of keto chocolate chips is fully and evenly distributed throughout your dough. Once the chocolate chips are evenly distributed, push all of your dough to the center of the bowl then take half of the dough and press it into your prepared 8x8 cake pan. Make sure you press it evenly across the entire bottom. You want to make sure it's even so you can have an even cook on your cookie squares. Once the bottom of the pan is covered with the cookie dough, then gradually spoon about a fourth cup of keto caramel sauce over the top of the dough. I usually just spread this out by tablespoonfuls and use a knife just to lightly smear it around. What you don't want to do is you don't want to push it into the dough. It's just supposed to be a light glaze on top of it. So when you do spread it around, don't do any pushing, just lightly spread it. And it's up to you really how much of this caramel sauce you want on there. You can put more or less. I do around a fourth of a cup. Sometimes I do a little bit more, but you don't want to go crazy with it because if you put too much caramel sauce, 
then your cookie bars will be really soggy. So about a fourth of a cup works well, more or less according to your taste. Once the caramel's added, then drop the remaining cookie dough by teaspoonfuls over the top of the caramel sauce. Now again, you don't want to press this dough on top. If you press it, then the caramel sauce just basically gets absorbed by the cookie dough and that and you don't want that. You want to be able to have that kind of swirly sauce in your cookie squares. So just drop the remaining dough by teaspoonfuls over the top. Once the dough is all dropped over the top of the caramel sauce, then use your fingers or a knife and just slightly even out the top of the dough. It doesn't have to be flat or even because it didn't because again, like I said, you don't want to push it into the caramel sauce. You just want the cookie dough to be connected on top. You, you don't want there to be space in between the dough. You want it to have a fairly even top, not, a, not necessarily a flat top. So you don't want to really see the caramel sauce that's underneath. Because when you bake this, it's going to look like one square with some caramel glaze in between is what you're shooting for. So you're not wanting to push it down or make it absorb into the caramel sauce. You're just wanting to drop the dough and then use your knife or fingers and spread it a bit just so it's all connected. Once the cookie dough is all formed, if you want to, you can top it with a little bit of extra caramel sauce. Just remember, as I said before, the more caramel sauce you add, the softer your cookie is going to be. So if you're wanting an extra crispy or crunchy cookie, then you don't want to hardly put any caramel sauce. But if you're like me and you like your cookies a little bit softer, then I like to add a little bit of extra caramel sauce on top. So that's up to you. If you do choose to do it, I just take a couple, two or three tablespoonfuls and just kind of drizzle it over the top. You're not trying to make a frosting, just a little bit of a drizzle. Once your dough is shaped and formed, and if you have the caramel sauce on top, it's all prepared the way you want it to. Place it in your preheated oven and bake at 350 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes or until the edges are lightly golden. 30 minutes worked perfect for me. Once it's all done baking, remove it from the oven. It will still be soft, but it will firm up as it cools. Allow it to cool in the pan for at least one hour or until it is close to room temperature. Once it's cooled and is firmed up, grasp the parchment paper handles and gently and carefully lift out the cookie slab and place it on a wire rack so it can cool completely before you cut it. Once it's cooled completely, slice your desired size of cookie square, place it on a plate, Serve it with some milk of your choice if you want, or just eat it as it is. Just eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button. You can leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make, and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.